Live from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go, this is Valley News Live at 5. We start with breaking news out of Bemidji, Minnesota, after the man accused of murdering one person and shooting another says it was all in self-defense. 18-year-old Antonio Parkhurst is charged with second-degree murder and second-degree assault after the incident in the 1100 block of Minnesota Avenue Northwest Monday night. Today, police identified the victim as 20-year-old Lupe Rizzio. Authorities say he was killed by a single gunshot wound to the torso. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Bailey Hurley looked into the case today. She joins us with more details. Bailey? Mike, court documents say when Bemidji police arrived at a home on Minnesota Avenue Monday night, they found Lupe Rocia dead in the front yard. And while officers investigated the scene, they were then dispatched to the hospital for a report of another male with a gunshot wound. The 17-year-old victim told officers he was jumped and robbed at gunpoint by Antonio Parkhurst in the alleyway of the home on Minnesota Avenue, adding Parkhurst shot him with a handgun. However, because of discrepancies between a female witness and the 17-year-old victim, Bemidji police continued to investigate. The female witness later told officers that she, Rocio, another female, and the 17-year-old conspired to lure Parkhurst to the home Monday night to rob him of money. Documents say when Parkhurst arrived to the home that night, the woman directed him to a bedroom while Rocio and the teen were hiding in a separate room preparing to ambush Parkhurst. Rocia and the 17-year-old then ran into the room wearing masks. The female witness told officers she soon heard two gunshots and panicked. Parkhurst was arrested in Bemidji after a two-day manhunt Wednesday afternoon, later telling police when the two masked men ran into the bedroom and started assaulting him, he fired two shots in their direction in order to stop the assault and flee. Parker said he knew police were looking for him, but was afraid and chose not to turn himself in. Mike. All right, thanks, Bailey. If convicted, Parkhurst could spend up to 50 years in prison. There's new information tonight surrounding that three-year investigation into to a Detroit Lakes massage parlor. Court documents say police received a tip from a person in DL who believed that the business was a front for prostitution. The investigation led police to a website that is frequently used for prostitution and sex trafficking. Authorities searched the massage parlor and the home of owner Jin Lan Lee in Holly. And another home was searched where investigators say they believe Lee's employees were staying. We'll have much more on this story coming up tonight on Valley News Live at 6. New for you at 5 o'clock, one man is in jail following police chase through two counties. Authorities say it happened this afternoon when Ottertail County and Fergus Falls Police were pursuing a stolen car on Interstate 94. The car was possibly carjacked, and when it entered Clay County, Barnesville police deployed stop sticks that flattened two tires. A pit maneuver was used and caused the vehicle to slide into the ditch. The driver, who hasn't been identified yet, was arrested without incident. It's hard to be crabby when you get weather like this in February, and it's going to stick around the whole weekend. Hutch is here now with tonight's No Way Weather Planner. I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson. Yes, yes, I've got to tell you, it's a beautiful day out there and we are enjoying some melting taking place here in the FM area. That's sunshine going to work. Here is a look at our aerial low temperatures today. We were not below zero, above zero, and that was nice starting point, but the, the sunshine really did go to work. Rising temperatures from the Red River and points west into the low to mid 30s. Look at Cavalier, the hot spot right now in our area, 36 degrees, Bidette and Bemidji also in those 30s. Melting some snow today, that continues into the early evening. Your hour by hour forecast shows though that we'll slip back into the 20s for most of our nighttime hours after sunset. Light winds and look at that sunset time, Mike. 6 p.m. is when the sun goes down here in Fargo and we're gaining about three minutes and 15 seconds of daylight each and every day. I'm all for it. We'll talk a little bit more about how long our warm weather stretch lasts here in a couple of minutes. Warmer and more sunshine. That's a good, uh, good deal. It is. All right, thanks. Time for a look at this week's Valley's Most Wanted. Police say 31-year-old Theodore Henry is wanted on a probation violation on a felony drug paraphernalia charge. You're asked to call local law enforcement if you have any information on his whereabouts. A former Sanford Center executive director will spend 21 days in jail after pleading guilty to theft by swindle. 
Curtis Webb was charged for a scheme involving tens of thousands of dollars for fraudulent expense reimbursements. Investigators from the Beltrami County Sheriff's Office were able to track down records of Webb's reimbursement requests, which often included hotels, airfare, event registration, rental cars, and food. The 48-year-old Webb was the executive director of the Sanford Center in Bemidji from 2013 to 2016. Fargo teachers officially have a new two-year contract, the board approving the plan, which calls for a first-year pay increase of 1.5% and a 1.25% increase the following year. This pay increase will be retroactive to the beginning of this school year. A full calendar day was also dropped, bringing the school year from 191 days to 190. And teachers will be allowed to take time off for injuries suffered due to student behavior. New concerns tonight about Russian efforts to interfere in the 2020 presidential election. CBS News confirmed that intelligence officials briefed lawmakers about Russia meddling to boost President Trump's re-election chances. The development comes as the person President Trump said he was considering to become the new director of national intelligence declined the job. Catherine Johnson reports from Capitol Hill. Back in Colorado President Trump is said to have been furious that U.S. intelligence officials warned lawmakers last week without his knowledge that Russia is actively working to get the president reelected. A senior administration official tells CBS News the president repeatedly called it bull and complained the information could be used against him by Democrats. Russia, Russia, Russia nonsense. All the uh, scams. In a tweet, the president called this another misinformation campaign by the Democrats. Sources say there was bipartisan pushback during the congressional briefing on the credibility of the new meddling evidence. Everybody was talking about how the new thing is, oh, they're back to Russia again. Nobody's going to believe this garbage. Democrats are calling for additional hearings. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi announced an election security briefing for Congress next month. Earlier this week, the president replaced his acting director of intelligence, Joseph McGuire. The White House says the timing was coincidental, but CBS News has learned the president was angry McGuire had allowed the briefing without telling him. The president said Thursday he was considering Georgia Congressman Doug Collins as a permanent replacement, but Collins doesn't want the job. This is not a job that, that interests me at this time. It's not one that I would accept. President Trump tapped U.S. Ambassador to Germany Richard Grinnell to temporarily fill the position. Katherine Johnson, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And the president tweeted that there are four candidates under consideration and a decision will be made within the next few weeks. A second child has been reported dead in Minnesota as the flu continues to run through the state. So far this flu season, Minnesota has seen 58 flu-related deaths, including two children. Through the first two weeks of February, there were nearly 650 people hospitalized due to influenza in Minnesota, the highest two-week count of the season. It is especially noticeable in schools where there have been 762 flu-like outbreaks in schools this season. A Minnesota woman found the perfect way to celebrate the birth of her son after the tragic loss of her husband. Minnesota National Guard soldier Charles Nord died just over two months ago in that Black Hawk helicopter crash. His wife, Callie, was pregnant when he died. Baby Jack Charles Nord arrived February 11th, and while the family is still coming to terms with the loss of Charles, friend and local photographer Sarah Jean says she, she was able to capture a glimpse into their lives. Gordman's in Fargo is closing. The announcement comes less than a year after the store celebrated its grand reopening. It's not known exactly when the doors will shut for good. The company said it reviews its store fleet on a regular basis, but during the latest review, it made the decision to close the stores in Fargo and Grand Forks. No word yet on whether the Minot and Bismarck stores will also close. It's Mardi Gras time, including the 50th annual greasing of the poles today, kicking off the French Quarter's Mardi Gras weekend. It's one of the most anticipated Mardi Gras events of the festival season. The Royal Senesta began this ritual of greasing the building's support poles to deter overzealous revelers from shimmying up to the balcony space.